This video is a walkthrough of the University of Washington's Practice It website on a select number six of uh, string problems and scanner problems. And this is out of chapter three. So the first one is questioning just do you know the format for how you declare return values and your parameters passed in. So that is in the book very clearly and I've given information on that in my lecture as well. The second problem here is 311 and this one is simply asking you to explain what the name of a function is that has been declared in several different uh, se several different types. So println is an example of this where you can pass println an int, a double, string, anything. So what is the term for defining a method in several different ways with different variables? And, and that again is in the book. Uh, number three, string expressions. So this is teaching you how to use string expressions. They have very help, been very helpful in showing you here the index for all the string items. This is really what you're supposed to learn, so I'm not so sure that they gave you that. It's good that they gave you that, but um, you get, do get to use it. So here's the list of things. Now length is pretty obvious to everyone what the length of a string is. Care at, this is the first one that's testing you to understand what is character zero and what is is one so it shows you right here character zero is the first one okay so that's different than what we think of normally and index of same kind of thing also notice that there's string one and string two there's two different strings here so what is the index of a character let me just take a different character like this here what's the index of that character well it's not counting from the beginning at one it's counting from the beginning at zero so you can see here that's actually index four. Two uppercase, as I've mentioned before, strings are immutable. So two uppercase returns a whole new string that takes a string. For example, uh, this is not the one they're asking for, but it would take this one. It would return the uppercase version of that string. We haven't talked so much about what happens when you string these types of commands together. What happens in in all of uh, uh, Java is that when you see something like this you're gonna you're gonna read it from left to right so this here this is a string and it's gonna perform the two lowercase operation on it then that generates a new string that new string then calls the index of operation on that larger string and you could go on and on and on on several different things there um, and so you have to understand what does index of return hopefully by now you guess that index of is zero based and there are also special cases for if you can't find it. Substring, uh, this is just like in Python, there's two different forms of substring. You can either give the lower and the upper bounds or just the lower bounds and it'll return the rest of the string. Just like in Python, when you look for a character, uh, or sorry, when you look for a substring, say you ask for the substring from um, four to nine. Okay, that includes characters four, five, six, seven, eight, but not character nine. The reason why you do that is so that you can call substring again. So if you called it on three to nine, then you can call it on nine to 14. Okay, nine to 14 is gonna give you these characters here, but not the 14th character. So you can put that in a for loop and without having to adjust anything. Um, and that's the same, again, the same way as it is in Python. Okay, replacing, I think, is pretty obvious. It's going to take all the A's and convert them to O's. Here's another replacement. Now, here's a little bit different. Again, this is kind of uh, your transition to object-oriented programming. So, str1, this is a string literal, but in object-oriented programming, it becomes an object, a string object, and it, you can call all the string methods on it, just like you can uh, one of these things that ex has been explicitly declared as a string object. So it just imagine it's a regular string object with the value of str1 and you're just going to do the replace on it. Okay, so that is giving you a pretty exhaustive uh, education on how string methods work as well as object-oriented programming. You may remember from a few weeks ago we did an example where you had to figure out what the last digit of a number is. This is just a simple extension of this don't think too hard into this. It's actually just a very, very small number of lines of code. All you have to do is figure out how to, to take the last digit in the case of a negative number. So you already know how to return the last digit if it's a positive number. By definition, 
the, um, the, the method you used last time will return a negative number. Uh, so you have to figure out how to convert that. You want to look in the math class to see what functions you have available to you. Don't try to write it from scratch. I know you can, but that's not the point of this. The point of this example is to use the math class. Okay. The next question is padding a string. I'm going to actually come back to this one in just a second. Uh, process name. This one's actually easier. So you're going to use the scanner class and you're going to prompt this and then it's going to accept some input and you need to print it out in reverse order. This is actually a very simple program if you know how to use the scanner and you know how to use the even the basic string functions. But I want to go back to the previous one. It's kind of hard to explain how to do this or give you some hints without giving it away. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch over to Eclipse and show you a completely different problem that will help you on both of these last two problems and give us some practice on scanners and strings. So here I've created a, um, a little test platform in Eclipse and I've created a nice little function header here, something similar to what I would like to see you do. So we're going to prompt for a lower number and a higher number and it's going to print out the string from the lower number to the higher number. Okay, so let's start working on this. So do you remember how to declare uh, the, uh, the scanner? So we're going to do a uh, scanner SC. And it's okay to use SC. It's shorter than I would like, but generally you're only going to have one scanner anyways. And scan SC is a pretty unique combination. So we're going to do new scanner. And then scanner can take any sort of thing, but it can take a file, for example, which is very useful. But we're going to go ahead and take it from the standard input. And then we're going to, um, let's go ahead and prompt the user. This generates a string from lower to higher number. And then now we're going to actually generate the prompt. What's the lower number? Okay, now do you remember how we get that number out? So it's going to be SC. Um, actually, I have to declare a variable first. Let's do, um, let's try this string S lower. Now, the reason I'm saying S lower. There's two reasons. First of all, I want it to be descriptive, so that's why I'm using the word lower. I'm putting S here because I want to distinguish whether it's a string or an integer. This is it. At Microsoft, we have a convention called Hungarian. A gentleman by the name of Charles Simone, who was just in the paper yesterday, um, and he actually, actually was one of the very first creators of Microsoft Word. He was at Xerox Park. He invented this naming convention, and the days before when our, our text editors could, could actually check things, that was basically the reason we were able to create programs. Um, so I'm going to use the scanner class, and I'm going to use the next to get the string. Okay, so I get a string back for the lower number. And actually, let's put these together because those two things go together. And I'll separate this out. So now when someone's reading this code, they see, okay, here's one thing. It's prompting. Here's another thing. These two together. What's the lower number? Okay, the next thing I want to do, let's see, let's just comp copy here. Let's copy these lines. Now we're going to prompt for that upper. And I would normally comment pseudocode and say, what's the prompt for the lower number, prompt for the higher number? But in this case, the the, uh, the prompts are so obvious that it basically serves as the comments. Okay, and then I'm going to keep this S, but I'm going to make it higher. Okay, so we've now got our lower and our higher number. Now, the question is, how do we loop over these things? So when you're writing pseudocode, I would definitely say, you know, loop over numbers, build string. That's actually not going to be necessary because this loop is going to be so simple, but while while you're still learning, I would recommend you do something like that. So I'm going to loop over the numbers. So let's think about this. How are we going to loop over the numbers? So we've got a lower and a num and a higher. So we know that we've got some lower and higher involved in here, and we've got to have some sort of a loop variable to loop over those. So let's use an integer. I'll call it the number. What are we going to start with? Think about that for a second. I'll come back. And then we're going to have number less than or equal to think about what that's supposed to be. 
And then we need to know, we need to increment num. Okay, did you figure out what these are going to be? This is going to be... Uh, now, I'm putting some errors in here. I'm hoping you're realizing what the errors are, but we'll figure it out in a second together. Okay, so I'm going to go from lower to higher, and then what do I have to do in here? I've got to build that string. So, um, I guess I need a string here. Let's call it uh, s result. Again, s for string. So this is the result. And I'm going to do the... I'm going to add each number at a time to the string. So I'm going to say s result equals, actually we can, well, let's go ahead and take the shortcut, plus equals, what's the number? The number that's added each time is going to be num. Okay, so what this should do is it's going to go from the lower number, for example, 3, to the higher number, 7, and each time it's going to add something to that string. So, and then uh, we just have one more thing we need, right? We need to do system.out.println. Don't look at this too closely yet because I, like I've mentioned, uh, there are some errors here. But I just want to, hopefully you figured out what the errors are. Okay, let's go ahead and try to run it. Actually, well, let's not even bother. Let's see, what are these x's? Less than or equal to is undefined for the arguments type string. And what was the second error? Second area, type mismatch, can, cannot convert from string to int. So, hmm, ints and, ints and strings. So here, this is actually a string. So what we need is an int. And it told us that there's actually no conversion from string to int. But luckily for us, there is a next int function. And that, instead of take, returning a string, returns an int. I'm going to change it from s to i. Okay, so again, this is why we, I like to use Hungarian. It shows me whether I've got strings or ints. It is a little bit of a pain because you do have to, if you change the variable, you then actually have to change this. But there's actually a feature in Eclipse to do this for you automatically too. So it's really not that big of a deal. Okay, notice how that error went away. Okay, so now we're actually iterating over the numbers. Okay, and then, oh, what's this? Cannot, s result cannot be re resolved. Why can't s result, result be resolved? Well, it's because s result was declared in here. That's a loop, an inside the loop variable. So when we put it inside these braces, that's the only place that it lives. It does not live outside the loop. So now we need to move this out of here. Okay. So now we got another error. What's this? The local variable s result may have not been initialized. Ah, it is right. We need to initialize that to the empty string. Okay, now what's left? Huh, well, all our errors went away. Let's, let's try running it. Okay, go ahead and save the resources, please. Okay, so it's printing out. This generates a string from lower, higher number. What is the lower number? Three. What is the higher number? seven three four five six seven hey it works let's try another let's try it on a different number here the lower number is um let's say it's four higher number is 13. well this this did the right thing although gosh it looks really messy out here so this actually executed correctly but let's do an additional step here how do we put a comma in between each of these So we know it has something to do with the string, and we know it has something to do with the comma. What can we do here? You might be thinking, oh gosh, is there some string function in the string library that will allow us to do this? Um, there actually might be, but we don't have to do anything that complex. We can do the same thing we did before, and I will actually spell it out this time just in case any of you are confused. S result equals S result plus semicolon. Okay, let's try running that. So now lower number is 3, upper number is 14. So now let's go back to the problems and see what it is that we learned. So you learned how to use the scanners 
you can scan their, these things in, then you just have to figure out how to build this string. And we've talked about string concatenation through that example. That one is actually fairly straightforward. This one is harder. So here you're going to be creating this method pad string. It's going to take a string. And so now by now you should know how to accept parameters of a string and an int. And you know how to use the string class length method to figure out how long a string is. And then you've got this int here. And then you need to figure out how do you build a string using a for loop like I showed you. Uh, it's not exactly the same, of course, but you're going to build a string that has some pads at the beginning and then the string at the end. Now I want to mention another thing. Some of you have been trying problems in Eclipse and then pasting them in here. Now I, I showed you how to do these in Eclipse. The reason why is because I wanted to do some fancy stuff that's not in Practice It. I would definitely recommend you do these problems in Practice It for a couple of reasons. One is that uh, Practice It has some specific requirements. Right here it tells you don't write the whole program, just the, the method above. Okay, so if you copy and paste from Eclipse, it's not going to work. A second reason is that Eclipse already prompts you, I mean, sorry, Practice It prompts you for things that it's expecting. So, for example, it's going to do the code to provide this input into your program. So if you do it in Eclipse, you're going to actually be doing more work because when you run the program, you're going to have to type this stuff in yourself, whereas it already has a bunch of tests that it will run for you. So, um, and just in general, I think it's you, really practice is intended to be standalone. I think you're going to be, be faster to uh, just do it right here. It'll give you all the feedback that you need right here. So while it's good to use Eclipse, and you definitely should use Eclipse sometimes, um, try to do it in practice it. All right, so hopefully that's an overview of how to do those problems, and good luck to you.